We are speaking with Australian, the Australian Pink Floyd show, I guess, founder, Chris Barnes, right? Oh, no, 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 I'm not the founder. No, the band began back in 1988 and I was just starting high school in 1988. <laughs> oh, OK. Will, I, you uh, me, I, will you tell me a little bit about the history of the band? Yeah, the band began back in Australia in 1988 and uh, after touring around Australia for a few years and realising there aren't that many people there to play to uh, and due to some family connections, they relocated to the UK in 93, I believe it was. And I, I mean, I first saw the band in 1999. I took my then girlfriend, my now wife, because uh, she's a big Floyd fan, to see this band. And I just couldn't believe there was people playing Pink Floyd music, you know, in this room with about 800 people in. I mean, the band was very small then. It was just a five-piece band with quite a smallish production. But it was still incredible to see, you know, this brilliant music being played with such dedication. These guys, heads down, you know, concentrating. On, it was just, it was stunning. And um, I never once for a thought, you know, for a second, that I'd be in the band all these years later. I joined in 2015, so I still feel like a new kid even though it's been, what, nearly nine years now. So, you know, with the band, you know, I remember seeing them, and, of course, the uh, Kangaroo with Dark Side of the Moon and, and all the fun stuff there. You guys just don't play the music. You also, the Australian Pink Floyd show, you give them a light show and a visual show because that's one of the things Pink Floyd themselves was known for. <clears throat> yeah, obviously, yeah. Pink Floyd weren't just guys on stage playing some tunes. They were all about this multimedia presentation with screen films and, like you say, inflatables and a really cutting-edge light show, the lasers, all kinds of crazy things happening. Um, and as as sort of thing productions developed through the 70s, Floyd were right there at the, at the very forefront of pioneering stuff. Even in the early days with Sid Barrett, they had a quadraphonic PA. I mean, that was really cutting-edge. And obviously, with us being a Pink Floyd tribute band and it being as long as it is now since 88, the, the band have channeled all their energies into replicating this, the, the experience, like we say. So we have the big circle screen showing these films and we have the inflatables and this this light show. And, you know, if any in, in many ways, it sounds silly to say, I suppose, to the outsider, but we're anonymous. We're kind of like an orchestra just playing this music, crossed with kind of like professors in a laboratory working on the experiments, you know, trying to, get the guitar sounds and the keyboard sounds and, and, and the vocal sounds. Myself and Ricky and, and sometimes Dave, the guitar player, one of the guitar players, you know, our voices, whose voice does it suit best? There's no point just me singing everything just because I'm a kind of dedicated singer because there are a lot of songs that just suit Ricky's voice more than mine. So it is very much the tools for the job, whoever whoever fits it best, you know, and that applies to the guitar playing as well. And it's, um, yeah, it's a really big machine so i'm a very small cog in a very big machine is the sort of my standard answer to these sort of questions because i just sing so you you had also mentioned earlier that they started out as a five piece how many members are in the band now touring we're a 10 piece a 10 piece so double so from the beginning you know yeah, it's, it's interesting you know listening you talk about who what suits better because even pink floyd when they recorded the album wish you were here they didn't have any of the members of the band sing on uh, Have a Cigar. They went and got an outside That's singer because right. they felt it would fit that song better for as the manager, you know, that kind of thing. Um, what could people, if somebody has never seen the Australian Pink Floyd show before, you know, you've been around a long time, but maybe this is going to be their first introduction. They're thinking about it. Maybe they're sitting on the fence. If they go or what, you know, what can they expect? I guess if they've got um, even a passing interest in uh, the music of Pink Floyd or certainly uh, what Pink Floyd were known for in terms of stage production, you're going to get that um, a replication of that Pink Floyd concert. Um, we're covering, on this tour, it's not an album-based tour, like last year was Dark Side, next year it'll be Wish You Were Here because they're celebrating their 50th anniversary. So this kind of greatest hits tour that we're doing is literally everything from some Sid Barrett song from 1967 right through to the Division Bell and all stations in between. You know, if you've got a passing interest in the space rock period that was before Dark Side when they were kind of finding their way, we've got you covered. The big albums of the 70s, Dark Side, Wish You Hit, Animals of the Wall, we've more than got you covered. I mean, if you like the Gilmore era, which was in some ways arguably their most, the biggest tours, you know, the, the tours of the 80s were just ginormous stadium hopping things and the 90s. Um, we're kind of covering all bases for, you know, if, if you're a fan of a certain era of Pink Floyd, we've got you covered. And obviously, if you 
got a packet set of passing in and you're aware of some of these other things, then we could turn you on to something you might not have heard before. Or it might, you might not, you know, you've got to give it a second chance and you go back to go, I, I remember that. Yeah, I had that in college. You know, I remember sharing a room with someone and they put that album on and we sat there and listened to it in the dark or something. And we're trying to take you on a journey, I would say, a sonic and visual journey through the Pink Floyd canon. So do you do like what Floyd has done uh, in the past? Do you guys do two sets? Is it like, do you take a little intermission and, and do that whole yeah. thing? Oh, wow. Well, so yeah, yeah. you do yeah, the whole yeah. thing like that. Yeah, very much. And it's not a kind of, like, I talk to the audience, but I'm not, hey, who's having a great time? And woo, and like, hey, look at that lady there. And it's very much the reserved Pink Floyd, you know, it's not about the people, it's just the show. And thank you very much for coming and let's have a good time. Right? Thank you. you know, it's, it's, it is very much their, the, the, their mold that the Aussies got together, their blueprint back in 88. We follow that to the letter, you know, that is... You know, um, yeah, the blueprint, you know, it's the words we sort of, uh, words we live by on tour, you know, um, the um, the Pink Floyd mould that they followed in that, you know, um, is, is, how can I put it? It's not about the individual. It is about the sonic experience. The original Shoegazer band. Mm. You know, that's how I look at Sorry, it. I missed that bit. Sorry, well, I cut the, out there. What did you oh, say? The original Shoegazer band. Uh, yeah, in many ways, I suppose they were. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, they you didn't know. have like a Freddie Mercury running around in a kimono, did they? You know, Floyd was very reserved. Yeah, they were always kind of like, I always told people, I go, when I got into them and started listening to their music, they were probably the world's most famous band that you didn't know the individual members. I think they got more famous yes. after the Roger and David and the rest of the guys had their split. You started knowing yeah, more. Yeah, very much them. so. Yeah, very much so. And obviously now both of those two are sort of carving their own path through the world and that's that's great they want to do that that's great nick's doing his thing as well yep you know the source of full secrets you know they're, they're doing their thing and that's great as far as i see it if those guys are out there playing this music that's great because it's great music i mean let's face it for us as a bunch of musicians who are first and foremost pink floyd fans it's an honor to play tribute to, to play tribute to this catalog because it's like for us and for the audience it's music that we've all grown up with we know note for note every bleep every bend of the guitar now every word and you see it with people singing along and it isn't a case of oh, i could play a million notes on the guitar so listen to this this is this is how i would play it it's not that it's the album because mm -hmm. what would be the point of that no one's interested in your version of it and your your, your attempt to change it why, why would you do that you know and I guess the band's longevity since being around for as long as they have is, is testament to, you know, the fact that when they formed the band, they got it right. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting listening to you talk about it because, you know, I've I've seen all the different incarnations of Floyd and, and the whole thing and their solo mm -hmm. stuff. You know, with David, you're going to hear more than 90, 80s and 90s Floyd. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Of course. course, the big hits. With Roger, you're going to hear his stuff and his takes on things. And with Nick, he's yeah. doing the Sid and, yes, and he is, the yeah. early era stuff. With you guys, it seems like we're going to get the whole shebang, the Sid all the way through yeah, the David Gilmore era. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, because, I, I mean, me as a person who got on the Floyd train by listening to the Relics, Animal, uh, Re Relics album as a kid, that, to me, Sid's so important to the story. And he's kind of like a shadow that hang hangs over the entire Floyd journey. You know, I mean, the Wish You Were Here album is kind of a shine on is all about kind of Sid, you know, and there's yep. lots of references to the record industry, you know, picking up people, chewing them up and spitting them out. And like Roy Harper, who was brought in to sing on Have a Cigar, like you say, you know, that kind of, the the topics of that album are very much, I imagine the journey they went on, when because when Dark Side exploded, I mean, that was a world they just weren't aware of. And it was kind of, oh, hang on, we're famous. And they go to play massive venues. And it must have been very strange. They were used to playing in university halls where everyone sat on the floor and stroked the chin to it, like a jazz gig almost. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's everyone going, Way! you know, let's, let's have a party. And I, Floyd wasn't that kind of band. I actually have a bootleg from 72 of one of their concerts. And it's hilarious because when you listen to it now, it's interesting to hear all the old stuff getting the cheers. And then they come on yes. the dark side of the moon and there's no response from the audience because they'd never heard it before. Exactly. Yeah. And now it'd be the opposite yeah. kind of thing where people are like, what's this Arnold Lane or Interstellar? Or, what, what is this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, very much so. My uh, my father in law sneaks a tape recorder into the Manchester Free Trade Hall and record because he's a huge Floyd fan. Saw them many many times, and I remember getting the cassette off him when I started going out with my now wife um, uh, back then. And he lent me, "You've got to look after this." And I converted it to CD. So I just played it once, put it onto CD, and did give him a copy. And like you say, Dark Side just goes down as like, "Well, this is interesting. I suppose it's new, or you know, very good." Right, where's uh, set the controls? Play me something I know. Where's Echoes, you know? <laughs> and uh, it's so strange because obviously we know that album is one of the biggest selling albums of all time. And it's strange to hear it being received. So, oh, okay, very nice. Yeah, because a lot of times they were still working out the albums. In exactly. Live concert. Yeah. yeah. And the so, same with Wish You Were Here. I mean, they, they, they went out in 74 and were doing Shine On as this long, rambling G minor thing for a, quite a while. And and then they split it and shook out a cigar in there. And they were premiering what became uh, Dogs and Sheep on that tour as Raven and Drooling and you got to be crazy. And for an audience to sit through and the first half, they don't know anything. And then the second half is Dark Side and then the encore's Echoes. I mean, that's a great kick. But I mean, yeah, it must have been so strange. And the audiences then have a lot of patience, I guess. Oh, yeah, because the audiences now are like, oh, beer line. <laughs> so, you know. Yes. Uh -huh. So, you know... Uh, has, has Dave, Nick, or Roger, you know, have any of the members of uh, Pink Floyd seen the Australian Pink Floyd show, or are they aware of it? Yes. Um, in, I think it was 94, Gilmore came to a gig that the band were doing down near London and just appeared backstage and scared them to death, I imagine, walking around the dressing room door. <laughs> and then um, they um, played at Gilmore's 50th birthday party in... What's that? 1996. Oh, wow. And that was way before I was in the band. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've heard that story so many times. It just it must have been such a magical evening. And then the guys got up and had a bit of a jam with them and stuff. And I mean, I've met Nick at a book signing. Nothing to do with this. He's way before I joined the band. He released a book in, I think, 2004. And I went along to that and met him. And he was lovely. And he was such a nice guy. And and I went to see when he when he got the saucers off the ground. He played a few little run through gigs in London in tiny back rooms of pubs. Oh wow! And he stood up. He stood up after about um, quite a lot of the band were there and we were watching. And he stood up after about an half an hour or so. And then he just said, "Well, this is a bit strange being in my own tribute band. I guess I should call this the Australian Nick Mason Show." <laughs> and we kind of chuckled to ourselves, you know. Obviously, no one in the audience knew we were because we're nobody, you know. And uh, it, it was um, that was quite amusing, but. Um, I do believe I've heard from other guys in the band, you know, the founder members, that Roger did attend a gig once. I don't know where. I don't know how, how they knew that. But, um, yeah, um, so there, obviously there is a there is an awareness of the band because they played at his birthday party. So, oh, um, so you know, tell yeah. me about it. Like, you know, can can listeners, fans purchase your versions of Pink Floyd songs? Do you have uh, CDs or DVDs out of, of your shows? Don't. To be honest, if I hand on heart, I don't know. We did when I joined the band. Uh, we we filmed a DVD in Germany, and that was available. But last time I checked the merch stand, I wasn't. I didn't see any DVDs out now. I mean, I know that we put a lot of stuff on YouTube because I, I'm not. Again, I'm not a technical expert, but one of our guitar players, Dave, he is, and he was saying that the the picture quality on YouTube is. I can't, I'm not going to give you the references because if I get this wrong, you'll kill me. <laughs> but it's a higher rev res resolution image on YouTube versus a DVD. Oh, wow. I think. And I think we kind of just put, we every month, I think we put a new clip up from some stuff we've filmed over the years, you know, more recent clips. Um, I think we still do that every month. But I, this is, that's way above my pay grade. <laughs> I, I don't get involved in all that kind of stuff. So so uh, how long is a uh, Australian Pink Floyd show uh, concert? Um, I think the first set is around an hour, then we do a 20 minute interval, uh, and then the second set maybe like an hour and 20, something like that. I think something like that. It's kind of traditional what Floyd used to do, really. You know, it's it's kind of following in that mold, like you know, like I said earlier. Um, that seems about right to me. And people are getting their money's worth. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, you get a lot of bang for your buck, as you guys say. And then uh, you guys also, I'm pretty sure you have merch that you sell the, with the uh, your kangaroo yep. and, and all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's lots of different T-shirts and hoodies and baseball caps and, and all kinds of stuff. Loads of little other things, fridge magnets and beer bottle openers and just, just all kinds of stuff. 
And Chris, if somebody wants to follow the band on social media or a uh, website, where can they go to? Well, the website's aussiefloyd.com. That's really straightforward to find. Uh, I know that we're on Facebook and Instagram and, and YouTube and Twitter and all those things. And I think if you just search for uh, either the Australian Pink Floyd show or Aussie Floyd in its condensed form, you'll 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 find us on there. Um, relatively easy to find. And there's information about uh, the upcoming tours. We've already announced next year's 50th anniversary of Wish You Were Here tour for the European dates. They've already, I think the tickets are released, I'm not sure. But we've announced the dates anyway in the spring of next year. I imagine um, the next summer's American and Canadian dates will be announced at the start of the year, next year, I think. It's an ever, ever running machine, like I said. You know, We're already working on the set list we're going to play in 2026. You know, oh, what wow. curveball we can throw in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big game. Is is there a is there a song in your set that you are just so stoked to play? Maybe it's a deeper cut or an older song, or maybe one of the bigger ones that you know that you're like, oh, I'm so glad we're putting this in. Um, currently, um, you had mentioned relics. We did Dark Side. We did Dark Side last year, didn't we? We did 50th anniversary Dark Side, and that's that long journey that gets you to the end with brain damage eclipse. And that was just a wonderful moment. So we do, we do have brain damage eclipse in the set, which I do enjoy because you now I start singing, Ricky's putting a harmony in. And then when we go to eclipse, uh, there's my voice, there's Dave's voice, there's Ricky's voice, there's the three backing, backing vocalists. So there's this wall of voices and all the instruments and the light show and lasers and the screen. It's literally this, this huge moment. And, um, that's just really special. No matter when we play that, there's just something about, you know, um, there's a line in it where I do the, um, what do I say? Um, and all that you eat and everyone you meet. And then Lorelei goes, and everyone you meet. I can hear a sort of like answering me. That's pretty cool. Because that's Lorelei who actually sang with Pink Floyd. You know, that that's, you know, that's pretty special to, to be Wait, able to do that in, night after night. In your band, Laurel? Yeah, the- Laurel McBroom. Yeah, she's one of our backing vocalists. Oh, fantastic. So yeah. you have a yeah. real Floyd, like you can call it Floyd, previous Floyd member in the band. Yes. Yeah, Laurel has been in the band, I think, 13 years now. So yeah, um, it's wonderful to sit and talk to Laurel in the morning over a cup of tea and trade old war stories. <laughs> but obviously hers are like toying with the Floyd and the Stones <laughs> and stuff like that. Mine are kind of like, well, I played this gig in this punk club once and someone tried to steal my guitar or something, you know. But it's, yeah, yeah Laurel, Laurel is wonderful. She's so much fun to hang out with. Chris, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day looking for the show. It's going to be uh, the Tuesday, the 20th here at the Fox Theater in Tucson. You can get your tickets at the Fox Theater website and at klpx.com. And I know as well at aussiefloyd.com as well, because I saw that you guys have yep. the uh, touring uh, up there. One last question before we wrap things up. You were talking about planning ahead. So while you're doing your sets that you're doing every night, you know, for this tour, the greatest hits tour, are you already kind of practicing for the wish you were here tour already, or do you save space yeah. for that once the tour is over? No, no, no. There's, um, cause there's a few, there's a few little bits that need, um, need, like I've not, I've not sang or played. Uh, we've not, uh, since I've been in the band, we've only done the second half of shine on once we played the full thing in 2018. We did the full parts one to nine. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so um, we just need to go through that again because it's segue. There's the segues in between the tracks and stuff that need to be looked at. And and we're doing Have a Cigar, which I've never. I'm singing that, and we've never we've never done that since I've been in the band. They've not oh. done it since 2015. So there's that to go through, and there's a few other surprises that I can't possibly tell you about. That I'll get murdered. <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> that we need to work on, and then there's also, like I said to you, you know, we've got we got we kind of got next year boxed off, but then 2026 we're looking at throwing in a couple of things, which is pretty exciting. But obviously, we won't rehearse them until next year or yeah. whatever. And in this in the new year, um, probably late January, early February, we'll meet up and have a full production rehearsal in a usually hire a venue, set everything up get all the crew in, you know, see all the films, see what the lighting designers come up with. Tom, he comes up with all these wonderful ideas that complement the lyrics or the vibe of the song. Or when there's a loud bit, there's a big flash or whatever. And yeah, it's, um, it's you know, everybody gets their heads together and, and works on all this stuff in the downtime. And then we meet up, make sure everything works. And uh, yeah, so next year is kind of, we're already prepping on next year right now. And it's, what is it? Middle of August. Wow. 
Well, Chris, thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Look forward to the show next week here in Tucson. Um, safe journeys until you get here and uh, looking forward to meeting you in person, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, that'll be great. But yeah, looking forward to the show. We do like the Fox. We uh, played there, I think, last year. Everyone's walking around with the T-shirts on. They all bought T-shirts. <laughs> nice venue. Yes, it is. Uh, historical as well. So yes. thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Again, AussieFloyd.com. No and then look up the Australian Pink Floyd show on any of your social medias to follow them. Probably look for that blue check mark to make sure it's the official one. <laughs> yeah. And, and Chris, I sincerely appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you. No problem. Thanks very much. Thank you.